Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Moberly Jordan incident. This is one of the most famous cases of possible time travel, but it also might just be a ghost story. I don't know. I'm not here to tell you what to think, so I'll just tell you the story and let you decide for yourself. In 1901, two professors from St. Hugh's College in Oxford, England went to take a little visit to the Palace of Versailles, which if you didn't know was the French royal home until the monarchy was abolished in 1792. That means that this was once the home of Marie Antoinette, and she was one of the last royals to live there before she was executed in 1793. So on this visit in 1901 by these two professors, they're just walking around, seeing the sights, enjoying their time. As they're checking out the private retreat built for Marie Antoinette by her husband Louis XVI, boom, out of nowhere, these two just see the Marie Antoinette sitting there, sketching away, dressed in 1780s attire, but not only her, there were a bunch of people also dressed in this same sort of way who seemingly just appeared out of nowhere. Just as quickly as they appeared, however, once the tour guide approached the two professors, all of the people vanished. The pair ended up writing a book about their experience which was quite successful because of how grounded it seemed. Did they travel through time? Did they see ghosts? Or is this all just made up? In our number 9 spot today we have the bookstore. In 1996 a man and his wife were out in Liverpool doing a bit of shopping. The man's wife went into a bookstore and instead of accompanying her there, he wandered off down the street in search of a CD store. As he strolled down the street he began to notice everything getting quiet. After this he noticed a van that looked like it was from the 1950s that honked and swerved around him. At this moment he realized that he was somehow standing in the middle of the street and that everyone around him was dressed in 50s styled clothing. Like anyone would be in this situation, he was super confused and he went to head back to the bookstore where he had left his wife, but when he turned around, the bookstore didn't even exist anymore. Where the bookstore was a minute ago was now a women's clothing store, and as soon as he did, it turned back into the bookshop he had initially left his wife in. He was back in 1996 and could not figure out what the heck had just happened to him. After this whole ordeal, he also learned that the clothing store he had seen and gone into hadn't existed since the 1950s either. Whether this is a real Real time travel story or there's some sort of other explanation behind it, that poor man was probably absolutely terrified. In our number 8 spot today we have Hutton and Brent. In 1932, journalist J. Bernard Hutton and photographer Joachim Brandt were sent by the German newspaper to the Hamburg shipyard in order to do a story. Everything was going fine and well and normal and honestly kind of uneventful until things took a large crazy turn. Both Hutton and Brandt realized that they were caught in an air raid and had bombs raining down around them. Brandt, like the dedicated photographer he was, snapped a few photos, but the pair quickly evacuated the area to get to safety. When they returned to central Hamburg all shaken up, no one believed their story at all. They got the photos developed in order to show their proof, but to their surprise, the photos showed no such thing that would suggest the story they were telling. With no evidence and no one around who would believe them, the pair had no choice but to just go on living their lives. 11 years later, however, Hutton was living in London and he opened up the newspaper one day to see what he never expected. The newspaper that day detailed the story of Operation Gomorrah, which was an air raid on Hamburg, and the photos in the paper looked exactly like what he had experienced 11 years earlier. Did these two somehow end up getting teleported to a time 11 years later while they were out doing that story that day? I truly don't know what other kinds of explanations there could be. In our number 7 spot today, we have Live Your Lie. A guy on TikTok who goes by the username Live Your Lie has begun to post videos claiming that he is a time traveler from the year 3036 and he offers his warnings to all of us. He tells his followers that they are as free as they will ever be right now and that our kids won't even see freedom. He says, so suck it up because as simple minded as your time period is, you got it pretty good, you just don't know it. Okay Mr. Live Your Lie, don't absolutely roast us all. Anyway, when I asked about the world population in his year, he says it's just over 2 billion people. He talks about something called the Big Blackout which he says happens in December of 2052. He says that the Big Blackout is when basically everything goes dark for upwards of 5 years, the internet, the power, it all gets disconnected on account of what's called the terrors, but many speculate otherwise. He says that during these years there's riots, turmoil, and that it's just the worst of times, and that it takes 
least 20 years for things to get fully back online. He also adds that in the year 3036, we still have zoos, but all of the largest animals are gone, so the zoos then actually just consist of animals like dogs and cats. I'm honestly not sure what to make of this one. Like, if he really is a time traveler, I appreciate the heads up on what's to come, but couldn't he have also said like one nice thing about the future? Also, if time travel exists in 3036, why doesn't everyone just head back in time to when things were good? I don't know, maybe there's some sort of reason or maybe he's lying. I guess one day someone will find out for sure. In our number six spot today, we have Sir Victor Goddard. In 1935, when Air Marshal Sir Victor Goddard was still a wing commander, he was instructed to head over to an airbase that was located in Drem, Scotland, that was inactive at the moment. As he flew over the base, he noticed it was in pretty terrible condition and that cattle had now begun grazing through the grass that found its way through the tarmac. Later on, as he was still flying, he found himself in a bit of a bad spot due to terrible weather conditions. To avoid anything bad happening, he decided to land at this inactive airbase and wait out the bad weather. What's weird, however, is as he got close to the base, the torrential downpour abruptly stopped and the sky very suddenly opened up with bright sun shining down. This was weird, but not totally unexplainable. But what was unexplainable is that the inactive airbase could now be seen in full use and full of mechanics in blue overalls working on yellow planes. This was weird for a number of reasons. Firstly, he had just seen the base and it was not even close to looking like this, so how could this all have just come out of nowhere? The mechanics weren't wearing their khaki colored uniforms that were the norm then, and the Air Force didn't use yellow planes, they instead painted all of their planes silver, and there was one plane there that he wasn't able to identify or recognize. Sir Goddard left the situation completely confused and shocked, but that shock only got worse four years later when he visited Drem again. After the years that had passed when he visited again, he saw the exact same scene he had seen four years before, like a full deja vu moment. Did he get confused on that day four years earlier? Did he fly into the future? Was this some sort of a flight 828 situation? Unfortunately, there's a good chance we may never know for sure what really happened. In our number five spot today, we have time travel underscore zero. Okay, so this is one that at the time was both one of the most famous and one of the most believed cases around. In the year 2000, an online thread began about time travel paradoxes on a forum for the Time Travel Institute. On the thread, a user commented on how a time machine could theoretically be made, and this prompted the response of a user whose screen name was time travel underscore zero, and they said, Wow, Paul is right on the money. I was just about to give up hope on anyone knowing who Tipler or Kerr was on this word line. By the way, number two is the correct answer and the basics for time travel start at CERN in about a year and end in 2034 with the first time machines built by GE. Too bad we can't post pictures or I'd show it to you. Okay, so this is obviously insinuating that whoever the heck time travel underscore zero is, is a time traveler. Throughout the next year, people continued to post questions and messages they had for this guy on that thread, and throughout time, time travel underscore zero became known as John Titter, and he told us all his story in great detail. He said that he had been sent back to 1975 in order to bring an IBM 5100 computer to his own time, but he was just stopping into 2000 for a brief rest on his way back home. I guess time travel is exhausting? I personally would not know. He said that the reason for the mission to get the computer was because he needed it to debug various legacy computer programs in 2036 in order to combat a known problem where UNIX was going to have a problem in 2038, similar to what people thought was going to happen in the changeover from 1999 to 2000. There definitely are people out there who still believe that John was a real time traveler, so I guess I'll just leave this one up to you to decide. In our number four spot today, we we have the time traveling hipster. This photo appeared on the Virtual Museum of Canada website and it was originally taken in 1941. The photo is said to have been taken at the reopening of the South Fork Bridge in Goldbridge, British Columbia, Canada. At a first glance, this photo is just normal and that story sounds perfectly reasonable, but once we take a closer look, it is clear why this photo went viral. There's that one guy in it who isn't dressed similarly to anyone else in the photo. While someone with their own unique personal style isn't exactly an anomaly, 
it certainly is very weird and suspicious that he seems like he could be from our current times, which is exactly why he has been dubbed the time traveling hipster. It appears as though he is wearing a more modern style of sunglasses, some sort of printed t shirt with a cardigan over top, and it even looks like he is holding some sort of compact camera that wasn't exactly widespread in the 1940s. Maybe the time traveling hipster really is just that, or maybe he really just was a guy from 1941 who walked off the beaten path so that hipsters today could run. I'm not really sure what to make of this one, to be honest. In our number three spot today, we have Andrew Carlson. On January 28th, 2003, Andrew Carlson was arrested and held by the police for insider trading at Wall Street. This was because of the fact that in two weeks, through the stock market, Andrew was able to go from having $800 to making $350 million. Yep. $350 million in two weeks. That is absolutely insane. When the authorities arrested him, they assumed he made his profits through obtaining illegal insider trading information. But when they asked him how he was able to do this, Andrew said that he was actually from the year 2256, and so he knew exactly how all of the stocks were going to perform. Obviously, no one believed this story and just assumed he was telling an extremely far fetched lie, which in circumstances like this would seem like a pretty safe assumption. But get this, when Andrew was released on bail, he totally disappeared and despite several attempts to find him, no one has ever been able to locate him. To make matters even a little wilder, it is said that he was also able to accurately predict the exact date of the US invasion of Iraq. Not sure how, but that's what the internet tells me. In our number two spot today, we have Edward. Edward is a man who has claimed that he has proof of the apocalypse, and he even brings photos along to prove it. Edward first appeared on Apex TV, which I'll be the first to admit hasn't exactly been a source of credible information, but who knows, maybe this is the time that they got it right. Edward claims that he was part of a top secret program in 2004, and that he was chosen to time travel to the year 5000. This photo I just talked about is a photo that Edward carries that shows Los Angeles completely underwater. In fact, Edward says that in the year 5000, the entire world is underwater, but humans have found a way to live on the water. He claims it happened because of global warming and explained that there was just too much CO2 in the air, which step by step destructed the natural shield zone. I'm not a Photoshop expert, so I wouldn't even know what to look for while looking at these photos he claims to have taken in the year 5000, so you guys let me know. You Photoshop experts watch. This. In our number one spot today, we have Edgar Allan Poe. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, before I started making this list, I was not convinced that time travel would be a possibility, but after making this list, I think I might be convinced that Edgar Allan Poe is a time traveler. Seriously, just hear me out on this one. There are two main examples why, and I'm gonna do my best to keep them concise. So firstly, Poe's only completed novel was published in 1838, and it tells the tale of mutiny on a whaling ship lost at sea. The men on the ship realize that they need to resort to some extreme measures in order to stay alive, so they begin Again, drawing straws to see who they're going to sacrifice for food. A boy named Richard Parker drew the shortest straw, and therefore he became the next meal. Okay, so let's fast forward 46 years to 1884, and in real life, there are now four men who have been set adrift after the sinking of a yacht. These men found themselves in a similar predicament to the novels, and I kid you not, they ended up taking the same route and elected to take the life of and then eat a cabin boy. The cabin boy's name? Richard Parker. Not convinced yet? Well, what if I told you that he accurately predicted a scientific advancement before it was even known by, well, scientists? In 1840, Poe penned the gruesome story The Businessman, in which the narrator suffers a traumatic head injury as a child and later lives a violent life. The weird thing about this story is that he was able to grasp frontal lobe injury so well before it was even a thing that was able to be greatly studied, as the first time behavioral change caused by this kind of injury were able to be studied didn't come until 1848. An actual neurologist, Eric Altschuler, wrote, there's a dozen symptoms and he knows every single one. There's everything in that story. We've hardly learned anything more. It's so exact that it's just weird. It's like he had a time machine. Maybe I didn't convince you, but I'm not gonna lie. This convinced me. In our number 10 spot, we have the green people. 
Apparently in the 12th century, a guy and girl were found in Woolpit, England. They were alone and didn't speak English or any recognizable language for that matter. But that wasn't the strange part. Their skin was green, yes. Is this what that 90s song was based off of? I'm blue if I were green, I would die. Because coincidentally, one of them did die. Dun dun dun. <laughs> they were discovered by a villager and pretty soon after the guy passed away. The girl eventually learned English and was able to speak about where she came from. She said she came from a twilight covered place called St. Martin's Land and that one day she and her brother were taking care of their father's sheep when they found a cave. They went into the cave and after walking for a long time they suddenly found themselves in Woolpit. That's pretty wild. And you know, I bet you they did slip through time from another dimension or maybe even another world because, well, humans aren't green, so that definitely screams aliens to me. Anyone thinking what I'm thinking? This is how the reptilian race started. Got it, got it. In our number seven spot, we have John Titor. Obvs, I couldn't make a time traveler list without the famous John Titor. John Titor is probably one of the most talked about time travelers around the world. Famously known for popping into our time in November of 2000 and chatting up a time travel forum. He claimed to be from the year 2036 and he said that he was on a mission to retrieve an IBM computer from 1970 but wanted to pop into the year 2000 for, you know, personal reasons. And he said that since he was here, he wanted to warn everyone about the crappy future that was up ahead. <laughs> How nice of him. A quick World War III in 2015 and a full-blown civil war by 2012 in the US. Well, perhaps he was, you know, five years or so off, but some people say that because he revealed info that it actually changed the future and therefore the timeline, you know, would be off. Hmm. Apparently he was so detailed that it was hard not to believe him. But anyways, super interesting to ponder over. Do you think John Titor was real? Let me know in the comment section below. In our number six spot, we have back to the past. Apparently in 1969, two men were driving on a southwestern Louisiana highway when they saw an old car in the distance. The car began to get closer to them and they saw that it looked like it was slowing down and perhaps the driver needed a boost. The men pulled up beside the car and looked in to see a woman and her child looking at them in 1940s attire and looking quite scared and shocked as they looked back at them. They gestured to her to pull over so they could help her and so they both did. When they got out of the car though and looked back at the woman, the car had vanished. Okay, did they travel to the past or did the woman travel to the future? I don't know. Is this what Back to the Future was based on? I think yes. In our number five spot, we have Montauk time travel. According to author Preston Nichols, there is a secret time travel base in Montauk, New York. Preston wrote the book The Montauk Project in the 90s and he claimed that in the 1980s he reclaimed some memories of working on the project. He says that they experimented on young humans and one human had psychic abilities. He also said they created a time portal to 1943 a portal that specifically opened on the USS Eldridge, the subject of the Philadelphia experiment. Apparently in World War II, the US performed a series of tests to cloak its workers with essentially a invisibility cloak of some sort. Apparently in October they succeeded, but there was a bit of a side effect. The Eldridge crew members went insane after traveling back in time for 10 minutes. Apparently the workers were brainwashed afterwards and their memories were wiped. Wow, well, honestly, I maybe believe it. If the army had cell phones in the 60s, most likely the government created a time traveling device in the 80s to go back to the 40s, right? It's possible. In our number four spot, we have Jofer Vorin. This story is super interesting and apparently there is no doubt that he was real, just that he might have been a little crazy, <laughs> but you can decide. 
Allegedly in 1980, there was a man by the name of Joffer Voren who was found in Germany. He apparently spoke little German, which of course made him difficult to understand. He claimed that he was from a place called Lexaria and spoke the languages Lexarian and Abramian. He said he was looking for his long lost brother, but had to stop here as he was shipwrecked. He claimed that the world was made up of five sections, Sakaria, Aflar, Aslar, Oslar, and Euflar. Hmm. Honestly, if this guy's story isn't real, I'm sad that he didn't become an author because that's some imagination. In our number three spot, we have the missing car. Okay, this one either confirms that this guy time traveled or that maybe we should be careful with who we let be doctors, one or the two. Allegedly in 1935, Dr. E.G. Moon was leaving the home of one of his patients in Kent, England, when he noticed that his car was gone. Also, the driveway was a lot rougher than he remembered. All of a sudden, he saw a man wearing several capes, a top hat, and had a large weapon with him. The man seemed to look like he was perhaps from the 19th century. He turned to go back inside the house when he looked back and he noticed that the pavement was normal again and his car was back in the place he had left it. In our number one spot, of course, we have the man from Torrid. Yeah, this story is one of my faves, so I had to make it first. This is another story about a man who is from a place that doesn't seem to exist in our dimension. In 1954, there was a man who was stopped at customs in Tokyo, Japan, as he declared that he was from a country that doesn't exist. He showed his passport and stamps to prove that he was indeed from a country called Torrid, and it was located between Spain and France. They asked him if he meant Andorra. He got, you know, angry and said, yes, the location was right but Torrid had existed for at least a thousand years. He had never heard of Andorra before. He was then put up in a hotel room for the night while the police investigated further. His room was being heavily guarded and that is why it was a complete shock to find that by the next morning, he had vanished. Dun, dun, dun. Number 10. John Titor. In November of 2000, there was a huge uptick in activity on the Time Travel Institute forums, which is still a website with some interesting reading material. In between all of the crackpot theories was a group of posts that seemed a bit too detailed to ignore. A man named John Titor was posting, and he claimed to be from the year 2036, and was sent back in time by his government to the year 1975 to retrieve an old IBM computer. They needed it for some debugging back in his home time. But as a little time vacation, he decided to stop off in the year 2000 for some fun. The posts on the forum detailed the technology he used to travel, along with future events like a US Civil War in 2012 and a Third World War in 2015. Obviously none of this happened, but his posts were so convincing and full of things that could have been possible, or could have worked in theory, that it may have been true, but just by revealing the information, he changed the timeline. We can't disprove any of the things he said, and no one has heard from him since. Number 9. Hipster Time Traveler In 1941, the South Fork Bridge was reopened in Goldbridge, BC, Canada. This photo was snapped to commemorate the event, and everyone out there seems to be dressed in their Sunday best, and no one paid any mind to it at all. But when it was uploaded to be part of the Virtual Museum of Canada, users found something odd, and it spread across the net like wildfire. In the back row of people, there's a man dressed in what one may now call hipster attire. Sunnies, and a graphic tee under a textured cardigan, and he even has the I couldn't care less hairstyle to go along with it. Some think he's from the future and inadvertently walked into the frame of this shot, and others think he's just some guy from the 40s who didn't get the dress code memo. Number 8. Future Photograph A man named Edward claimed that in 2004, while living in LA and working in a lab, he was given the opportunity of a lifetime, to be sent forward in time 3,000 years and come back with evidence to prove it. A massive achievement for the human species. He claimed in a 2018 interview that when he was sent forward, he was still in Los Angeles, but something was different. He was on a large wooden platform, and everything, all of the buildings and everything around him was made of wood, and water stretched out as far as the eye could see. When he looked down, he saw the remnants of LA under the water. He claimed that climate change had destroyed the planet, and water levels had risen to devour the entire city. And he has a photograph to prove it. I'm not sure if I believe that the photograph is real, but I think that the idea of LA being underwater due to climate change is totally plausible and 
very frightening. Number seven, back to the 40s. In 1988, Strange Magazine 2 published the account of a man named LC who claimed that back in the summer of 69, he and his business partner were driving through Louisiana and out of nowhere, the weather changed completely. Then ahead of them appeared an old car, a 40s turtleback going extremely slow. The car had an orange license plate with 1940 written on it, and what is even stranger is that antique cars like that weren't allowed on the road unless it was for a ceremonial parade. It was moving so slow that they thought something may be wrong, so they pulled up beside it and saw that the driver and her child were wearing clothing from the 40s as well. Once they gestured for her to pull over, the car vanished right in front of their eyes. Another eyewitness also corroborated the story. Now the question is, who was the time traveler, LC or the woman in the car, or the Montauk Project? Preston Nichols writes in his book that at Montauk Air Force Base on Long Island, dangerous experiments involving time travel were being conducted, and that he uncovered repressed memories of the experiments in the 80s. His book later became the inspiration to Stranger Things, as he claims that young people with psychic abilities were experimented on and exploited to use their powers to open portals and gateways into different times, one of which being to 1943 on the USS Eldridge, where the Philadelphia experiment allegedly took place. The goal of that was to make their ships invisible, and apparently it worked, but the ship was also sent 10 minutes back in time and the crew went mad. The fact that these two projects linked together seems to show that there was something special about the two experiments. Perhaps time travel attracts more time travel like a magnet. Maybe they'll explain it in season five of Stranger Things. Number two, Andrew Carlson. In 2003, Andrew Carlson was arrested for insider trading. Over a two week period, he had turned $800 into $350 million. It is impossible to make that kind of money without having some sort of inside knowledge. He claimed it was because he was from the year 2256 and came back to make money. He made all sorts of predictions, not just ones for his investments. He also correctly predicted the exact date of the US Iraq invasion. Soon after he was released on bail, he disappeared never to be seen again. This one actually seems like something someone with a time machine would do, squander it on making money. Number one, Victor Goddard. In 1935, Airman Victor Goddard was sent to inspect an abandoned airfield in Edinburgh. As he flew over, he noted its rundown, dilapidated state and that it was deserted. But on his way back, the weather changed drastically. There was heavy cloud cover and rain, but just as quickly as it came, it cleared again. And down on the airfield, he saw people in blue mechanic suits running around, working on yellow planes that he couldn't identify. And as a decorated airman, he knew his planes. It wasn't until four years later that he went back to the airfield to see people in blue mechanic suits working on the yellow planes he saw on the runway years before. Miles Magisters, which were not even manufactured until 1938. Number 10, Project Pegasus and the Chrononauts. While that may sound like a sweet alt rock band, Project Pegasus didn't have anything to do with music, but with moving through time. Seattle attorney Andrew Basaggio has been making claims since 2004 that when he was younger, starting at the age of seven, he participated in the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, Project Pegasus, focusing on teleportation and time travel. He and a few others were chosen at a young age because allegedly children could adapt well to the strains of moving between past, present, and future. Along with his fellow chrononauts, love the name, he adventured throughout time to places like the Gettysburg Address in 1863 and to Ford's Theater to witness the assassination of President Lincoln, quote, five or six times. I don't know why he was so obsessed with Lincoln. He was allegedly even captured in a photograph. He claims that he witnessed eight different time travel technologies throughout the course of the project and that most were based on engineering specs and sketches by Nikola Tesla. And if one person was to come up with teleportation or time travel, I think it would be Tesla himself. Pure genius, that one. Andrew even met himself a few times in the past and surprisingly didn't cause a paradox. His claims are supported by others who say that the Defense Department has had time travel capabilities for over 40 years but has kept it secret. Andrew Basaggio also ran for president in 2016, but we all know how that turned out. Maybe he should have used time travel to change the outcome. Number nine, Vrilin Ashtar radio incident. On Saturday, November 26th, 1977, in the Southern United Kingdom, a mysterious voice interrupted a news broadcast and gave strange commands and predictions of the future. Accompanied by unsettling pulsing noises and echoes, the electronic sounding voice claimed to be Vrilin, a representative of the Ashtar Galactic Command. Alien 
aliens or future beings sent to deliver a warning message that humans must denounce and remove all of their weapons of evil in order for an age of peace and prosperity to come to fruition, the age of Aquarius. If humans do not comply and turn from their evil ways, humanity will fall. Here's a little clip. This is the voice of Allah, representative of the Ashtar Galactic speaking to you. Though the message is foreboding and super creepy, this messenger from the future actually makes some good points and gives some decent advice. Like, have no fear. Seek only to know yourselves and live in harmony with the ways of your planet Earth. Seems like they were listening to the hippies at the time and they had the right idea. After taking control of the station, they bid farewell and said they would leave our plane of existence, leaving us with their final words, may you be blessed by the supreme love and truth of the cosmos. Aww. Thanks, Verlin. Number 8. Guardian Angel In 2019, a video surfaced of a shop owner in Turkey tending to some of his merchandise. Very normal, nothing to see here. Until a man calmly walks up behind him and casually taps him on the shoulder as he walks by, causing the shop owner to turn around. But not a moment later, a gate from a large truck driving by swings open, nearly killing him. And if it wasn't for this mystery man's actions, the shop owner would surely be dead. The truck driver returned to apologize for what had happened, but the mysterious stranger was nowhere to be found. Some commenters believe that this man had come back from the future to save lives. Perhaps not just the shopkeeps. That's the only one that we caught on camera. Others have noticed that the two men look similar, even their outfits aren't far off, implying that maybe it's the same man or their son somehow come back from the future. Though it looks like it was filmed on a potato, so who can be sure. Number 7. Rudolph Fence The story of Rudolph Fence is one that has been hotly debated amongst the time travel investigation community. In 1951, people in Times Square in New York City noticed a man suddenly appear, wearing 19th century clothing. He appeared to be disoriented and confused, and after running into an intersection in a daze, he was hit by a car and fatally injured. When his body was inspected, they found strange items in his possession that appeared to have come from another time. A copper token for a beer worth five cents bearing the name of a saloon, which was unknown even to older residents of the area. A bill for the care of a horse and the washing of a carriage made by a stable that was not listed in any address book, old banknotes, business cards with his name and address, as well as a letter sent to him postmarked in 1876. These items in his attire have led people to believe that Rudolph was a man from the past, probably from 1876, who unfortunately slipped through time to a place that he didn't or couldn't comprehend, and his confusion ultimately killed him. Tragic story, really. Number 6. Bob White in 2003, Dave Hill, along with countless others, received an email from Bob White. Normally, a spam email would just get ignored by Dave, but this one was too strange to pass up. The email explained that he needed help from a time traveler, or any alien disguised as human, because his life had been severely tampered with, and he needed, quote, temporal reversion to correct it. He resorted to the internet to find help. Y you ever come across anything like time travel? He asked the people receiving the message for strange mechanical parts that didn't exist, like an AMD dimensional warp generator module containing the GRC79 induction motor, or an Acme 5X24 series time transducing capacitor with built-in temporal displacement. I don't even think a Time Lord could help him find these ridiculous sounding parts. But Dave Hill decided to have some fun and responded to his message saying that he could get what he needed. And he even sent an old hard drive motor to Bob, claiming that it was a warp generator, which Bob gratefully accepted, believing it was the part he needed. It's a time machine, Napoleon. You bought it online. You're right. It works, Napoleon. You don't even know. It was later revealed that Bob White was a man named Robbie Tadino, a 22-year-old from Massachusetts who admitted to sending over 100 million messages for help out into cyberspace, and truly believed, and still does believe, that he was affected by time travel and needs to make a machine to fix it. The story he describes and the machine he seems intent on building is so specific that many people are convinced he has met time travelers or aliens and is really trying to recreate their technology with human things that just don't exist yet. Let's just hope he gets it all sorted out. Number five, the Philadelphia Experiment and Montauk Project. I've talked about these before in a previous video, but they require another mention here as there are so many accounts of what happened that it's overwhelming. Allegedly, there was a secret military operation being performed in 1943 at the shipyard aboard the USS Eldridge. The, ex the experiment involved cloaking, not time travel, strangely enough, but when they attempted to conceal the ship with the technology they developed, the ship did indeed disappear, but that was because it was moved 10 minutes into the past, which reportedly caused 
some of the crew to go mad. And later, another secret military operation called the Montauk Project was tasked with creating gates for time travel, using psychic links from children who are much more attuned to these kinds of things apparently, and can open their minds more, so the witnesses claim. One of these many gates that were opened apparently led back to the USS Eldridge during the 10 minutes of time dilation, but these two experiments are linked by one person who has since shared their experience. Number 4. Al Bielik Al Bielik was a Navy officer aboard the USS Eldridge during the Philadelphia experiment, also known as Project Rainbow, and when the time jump occurred, he wasn't sent 10 minutes into the past, he claims that he was sent forward to the year 2137. When he was rescued from the water, he was taken to a futuristic hospital, where he was treated for radiation sickness they say he developed from the time jump. He described major differences in the world, the coastlines being swallowed by the oceans, worldwide government collapse, followed by the rise of a system that allowed everyone to get what they need when they needed it, for free, by abolishing the concept of money. He was eventually sent back and continued to live his life, burdened by what he had learned, with few believing him, until he was later recruited by the Montauk Project as their program director for the psychics involved with creating the time tunnels, which he used to investigate as far back as 100,000 BC and as far forward as the year 6037. Of course, he maintains that the government has done everything in their power to stop him from revealing all of this, disavowing him once he went public with his stories. Do you believe his story? Let me know in the comments. Number 3. Time Traveling Trump Now. I don't like talking about this former first family very much unless it has to do with all the current investigations, but some of these coincidences are just a little too eerie, though I do believe that they are just that. This conspiracy theory came from a discovery on the Library of Congress website, where readers found books from the 1890s, one called Baron Trump's Marvelous Underground Journey, and another called 1900, or The Last President. The first is about a young man named Baron Trump who discovers portals for time travel, and at one point in the book he was actually guided by a man named Dawn. In the second book, an odd choice for president wins the election, and has someone with the last name Pence in their cabinet. Even the address where New York's Trump Tower now stands was mentioned. Personally, I believe that the former president's son Barron was named after the character in the book, not the other way around. But the connections found are certainly interesting. Number 2. Mike Markham In early 1995, 21-year-old Mike Madman Markham attempted to build a time machine on his front porch. Of course, it didn't work, but that didn't deter him, and he kept working towards his goal. He later stole the expensive parts that he needed and caused a bit of trouble doing so. Then after he got out of jail, he went on a radio program called Coast to Coast AM to talk about the machine he was building, saying that he was nearly finished and would be testing it soon, even giving out his phone number so that anyone with knowledge on the subject could help him out. Then he disappeared off the face of the earth. No one could find him for months, after which he said he was going to travel back in time only with his cell phone, and later that same week, an old story was dug up from the 1930s of a man who was found dead on a beach in California, encapsulated in some sort of metal tube with a strange device, the description of which matches that of a cell phone from the 1990s. Could that be the eventual fate of Mike? And finally, our number one, Under the Sink. In 2006, a Swedish man by the name of Hakan Nordvist was fixing a leak from a cracked pipe under his sink when he noticed something strange, a bright light that seemed to beckon him in a way. He crawled in and suddenly appeared somewhere completely different, but he wasn't alone. He claims that he met someone there, or rather, he met himself. He claimed that he ran into himself, but a future version, perhaps around 70 years old. And since he knew no one would believe him, he pulled out his cell phone and filmed the meeting. The two men do look remarkably similar, but the clincher for this whole story is when they rolled up their sleeves and revealed that they both have the exact same tattoo, in the exact same same place. We all know that one of the main rules of time travel is to never interact with yourself, so we're lucky he didn't cause a paradox and rip a hole in time and space. Mm -hmm.